Hi, in this video, I'd like to talk to you about reports, um, not specifically every individual report, but how to run reports in general in smart retail. Um, a lot of the reports, if not all of the reports from Grocery Manager are available in smart retail, but we've got quite a few differences in the way you generate reports, preview the output and ultimately print the reports. So to access the reports, we can get into our menu. You can see here in our report structure, we, in our menu structure, sorry, we have our reports split up into POS reports where we can get our hourly sales, cashier sales, and so on. There's a couple of new reports in here to do with uh, unknown items and loss prevention. The general report is also here called the transaction report. We have some audit reports, our standard sales reports, item movement, stock reports to do with stock on hand, um, some management reports and some rebate reports. So they're all available in the reports menu. So if we choose the item price book as the starting point, you'll notice the screen is separated into, at the start, two areas. The main options area where you can define how the report is to run and also a selection which is the filter on what to print so if for example go into our department sales report you can also see the same layout the options area and the selection so going back to the price book what you can do here is a price book is just going to produce a report of items that you have in your system so, for example, if you only wanted to put out a selection of items, not all of the items, say all of the tobacco products, you can come into here and apply a filter, say department name contains tobacco. And then if you hit OK now, the report will run using those options and it will give you a preview of the results. So here are all the products that make up this selection. Now the preview is run, you can actually just view the information here if you'd like. So this grid, like all grids in Smart Retail, uses the Smart Grid framework where you have the complete access to all of the column choosers. For example, the active flag, maybe we don't want to see the primary supplier, um, Maybe we don't want to see the savings percent, that type of thing. So we can basically hide and show what information we want to be different by default. If you do add or remove columns, in particular adding columns to the grid, you have to refresh the grid. So if you select inside and go Alt-R, that will refresh the data because new columns, have to the data has to be recalled from the database. So now you can see the active column here. So you can do your normal filters here. For example, I can say, yes, I only want to see active products. Um, I want to sort by the GP, all those types of features about our smart grid available here as well. If you do make changes, again, you can save the layout and we can give it a name. We'll make this our default layout and press enter so now every time we run this operational process this price book this will be the layout that we get by default so here we have the options to export to pdf and excel so if you want this list of items to come out in excel we can just choose export all and we'll get an excel spreadsheet here of just those items that we wanted so we can do that on an ad hoc basis. You'll also notice a new printer icon here that's different from our other smart grids, say in item maintenance. Here what we can do is we can actually run a report. So if we click on this, we'll actually get a report that we can print. This is a physical report that will print out. You can see the number of pages up here and so on. You can also email directly from this report 
for example, if I wanted to send it to somebody, you could choose what format you want. Most commonly, you would just choose PDF. And then you can enter their email address, subject, and message, and it will email this report to whoever you want. This is a manual process. You can print it directly to one of your printers in the store or connect it to your computer. You can also save the report into any one of those formats. Maybe you want a PDF so you can attach it to some kind of folder. That's possible here as well. You can navigate through here. You can zoom in, zoom out, and then scroll through the report page and page at a time. If you want to see all of the report, you can just go continuous. Now this will show you in one continuous screen all of the fields or all of the pages. So we can close the preview so we can switch back and forth between the preview and the actual report. We can close it. So if you want to refine this, you can come in here and add more filters. Active is true. When you adjust the filter, we press OK. And again, the preview will run. You'll notice our column layout is here and it's applied it by default. So other than hitting the printer icon, you've also got the drop down here. Some reports like the price book or the department report might have more than one standard report. So here you can see there's a price book report and an alternative one. So if I select that, it will actually run the alternative report. If you want a different report to be the standard for you, you can come into the drop down and hit organize and you can choose which report you want to be your default report. And when you do that, that will be the default report that you will see. I won't go into much detail regarding this, but there is an option within smart retail to create your own reports. You can select them and then duplicate the report. Maybe you want to modify the price book to suit your needs. So once you do duplicate it, if you go into my reports, you can see the report there. You can rename it to be my item My item price book and hit rename. And when you do that, those reports appear underneath the list of reports. So now I can select that one and that will be my report that I've created. When you do that, you do get the option up the top here to design the report. And here you have a complete editor that can be used to modify the report format. A couple of other useful tips in here as well is within item maintenance, you have a list of filters that you might have created or other users may have shared for you. In item reports, for example, you can also use those filters here. So for example, you don't have to recreate those filters. You can just you reuse those filters. So let's have a look at current specials, which is the same filter that's in item maintenance. Whenever you change it in item maintenance, the report will follow that new definition. So now that sets the filter, and now I press OK. And now you can see the preview. One other function of the reporting framework is that you can also use this grouping panel. So the grouping panel allows you to group the results. For example, you can drop, say, a column into the grouping, and then you can group the report or the preview by your selection. So now all my results are grouped by a supplier. When you save that layout, so I'll create a new layout called 
uh, I'll just overwrite the existing one. Now, every time I run this report, my results will be grouped by a supplier. The grouping also manifests itself in the Excel output. So if I export all to Excel, I'll get a new report down the bottom here. And when I open it, you can see all of my results are grouped by supplier, just like my preview grid. The grouping also appears in the report as well. So if I select the standard report price book, you'll notice the results of the report will actually appear grouped by that same grouping in the preview. Group by ABC sales, group by supplier. You can also adjust the sorting. For example, if you want to, it's sorting by normal GP now at the moment. If I change the sorting to be by description and then I run the report, the report printout will automatically obey the grouping of the preview column, the preview grid, sorry. Sorted by description. So most of the use cases of running a report, the preview will, will handle most of the situations that you need. So for example, you wanted to get a snapshot of the department sales, you can just come into the department sales report, um, choose the day that you want to view the sales for and hit OK. This will show you the sales information with totals down the bottom. So there's no need to run a report in most cases. Although if you do want a report, you can just hit the print button and you'll get the preview same as the price book. One other feature of every report in Smart Retail is the options for favorites. So what I can do here is I can save, maybe I wanna run this report every day. So I can come in here and say, save this as a favorite. And the favorite name is going to be showing my specials. So I'm going to say current specials active today. Now that's saved as a favorite, I can run that from the menu now and that will open up that report with that filter and that selection. So all I need to do is hit OK to actually run the report. And as before, it will group by my selection and follow my saved column layout. Once you have a filter or a favorite saved, you can come into organize favorites. Um, all your favorites are specific to your own logon. You can share favorites for other users if you'd like, and you can do that by using the, the share button. If you no longer need a favorite, you can also delete it. And if you want to make it your default, so every time you open up the price book, that will be the filter um, and options applied. So one of the new features in Smart Retail is the ability to schedule a favorite. So once your favorite has been saved, you can choose to schedule it. And here what we're doing is we're scheduling this report to run at whatever frequency we want. And we also have the option to automatically print it and automatically email it. So for example, I wanna call this my item price book reports active today. I'll also want to come into my email and say email the report to myself. I've also got the option to CC and BCC. And let's just call this price book of current specials. I choose the report format that I want out of my reports that I have. And I choose what output format I want and if I want to attach it. Now I hit OK. What I'm doing now is I'm specifying how frequently I want this 
scheduled task to run. So I click in the gear here and I can specify I want this every day starting today at 6 a.m. and recurs every day. You do have other options like emailing on specific days of the week and you can also say email on specific months and days of the week as well if you'd like. But let's just choose day starting today at 6 a.m. Hit save. And then we activate the report or the scheduled task and then hit save. So now every morning at 6 o'clock, this report will automatically be emailed to that configured email address. If you do want to change that email address, you can come into here and select the email address and come in here and modify the email options. So I have, I've done that to the price book, but I also have the ability to do that to any report. So for example, my department sales, I can come in here and go save, give it a name, and then organize, and then choose to schedule that report. In this case, I've already got one schedule, so I might just add it to that previous one. And let's say I want to include it with this task. So I'm going to get a price book and I'm going to get a department sales report. And in here, I want to email to report format, that one, and modify that. And in this case, I want it to be PDF as well. So now you can see I'm going to get a price book report and a department sales report.